The last day, I woke up and I looked out and I could see this body of water going by. I knew it had to be a river, too big to be a stream. So I got up, followed the stream and into the river and it turned out to be the east branch of the Penobscot. I took a right turn and I started down the stream and then all of a sudden, I looked up and up on a knoll were these two cabins. Then I looked down at the riverbank and there was a dock and a couple of canoes and then I felt sure there had to be somebody there. I saw this tree had fallen into the water. I climbed out on it, got in the branches and started hollering. And Mrs. McMorrin told me later on that she heard this hollering and Mrs. McMorrin was sleeping. She hollered at him, Nelson, go out and find out what that noise is. And he said, oh, it's just a wild animal. Well, she finally convinced him and he came out and I saw him. And then he turned around and went back in and I didn't think he saw me and I passed out. He'd gone in to tell his wife to call Stacyville or Patton where the ranger station was or some station to let them know that he had seen me, he knew who I was and he was coming over to rescue me. When I woke up, Mrs. McGorn is about that far from my face and I'm looking at her and she and then we both started crying. She put me in bed, put salve on me to kill the bug bites and then fed me tomato soup. Uh, that's me, and of course my hair was a little darker then. Uh, I don't know whether I was mad at something or the bugs were at me. I, really, I didn't look like I was a happy camper. Then the next day, I got to talk to my mom on the telephone. Unfortunately, it was a one line, everybody else was on it. And when I was talking to her, this click, click, click down, all of a sudden people started asking questions. This is been more, I told him to get the heck off the phone and let him talk to his mother. And I did, and my dad. And the next day, they put me in a canoe and then they took me down to the town of Grindstone. Uh, there's my mom whose arm is on the gunnel of the canoe and the lady in the t-shirt is her best friend and Dr. Young has given her the devil because she had almost tipped the canoes over and then she gets me up to wave and he didn't think much of that and he's going to tell her too he's telling me to sit still and then when we got to uh, Grindstone. Jeez, the place was mobbed. Later on, I thought about it. I wanted to make a big deal out of this for you. I didn't think all I thought about then was getting home to my folks, and that's all that concerned me. There were plenty of times I wanted to give up and just stay on the heck with it, like those last few days. But you just keep going. I don't know what, it, like I told you, it's your will to live, and you have it, and... People will fight, even when you, if you're familiar with all the people, you've been around all the people and been a hospice or something like, they fight to the bitter end. They don't want to die. And uh, you fight, you just fight.